What's up guys? So if you've ever tried to play fighting games as a newcomer, uh, you probably know it can be a little bit confusing with all of the interesting and obscure terminology that kind of comes with the territory. Because fighting games are such a legacy genre and so much of the concepts have been inherited for games like Street Fighter 2, uh, there's a lot of terms. It can be kind of hard to know them all, a lot of slang that players will use. So here I've compiled a list of the top 10 pieces of fighting game terminology that you should probably know. So these are just 10 expressions that you'll probably hear used in fighting games. Uh, and I'm hopefully going to explain the definition, kind of what they mean, and also what their origin is. So let's jump right to the list, guys. I hope you enjoy. All right, so first on the list is Tiger Knee. So Tiger Knee is obviously one of Sagat's special moves from Street Fighter 2. And in Street Fighter 2, the way you input this move is you do a roll from back to up forward. So it's like a half circle forward ending in up forward, which was kind of an awkward input. Uh, they did change it for future games in the series. They just made it a Dragon Punch motion with kick. We'll talk a little bit more about Dragon Punches later. Um, but the naming stuck around from the original motion. So now people use it as a shorthand to mean anytime you do a special attack, and you end the input in up forward, that's called a tiger knee or tiger kneeing the attack. So you can tiger knee moves to do them immediately off the ground in Dragon Ball Fighters. That's a really common use case. It allows you to do airborne special moves really low to the ground. You can do it with quarter circle forward attacks, quarter circle back attacks, whatever. Any attack that can be done in the air. Next up is meaty. So meaty refers to when an attack hits the opponent right as they get up off the ground. That's called hitting them meaty. So this mostly began in Street Fighter 2 and it had a few big uses there. One was that since your attack is coming out before they can get any attacks out, you're guaranteed to beat them on wake up as long as they don't do something invincible like a dragon punch. The other use for this is it enables new combos. So like normally DJ, his standing medium kick won't link into his crouching hard kick, but if you hit standing medium kick meaty, this combo does work, which is pretty cool. In Dragon Ball Fighters, meaties are very much still a thing, especially off of level 3 supers because the opponent isn't allowed to recover off the ground. Uh, if you watch my stream, I go for Yamcha meaty jab off of his level 3 a lot. And the reason why this is so good is that basically if they jump or if they press any button when they're getting up, the meaty jab is going to hit them because it hits on the first possible frame. So it's a pretty cool setup and something that a lot of characters tend to go for uh, off of a knockdown in Dragon Ball Fighters. Next up at number three is a happy birthday, which refers to whenever you hit two or more characters at once in the same combo. The reason this is called a happy birthday is it's because, like, your opponent is giving you a present, you know, of that second character to get some damage in on. So it makes killing their assist characters a lot faster, plus you can snap them in or force them to come in by killing the point character. Uh, this term was first used in Marvel vs. Capcom 3, where happy birthdays were a huge threat because assists take extra damage in that game. So if you clipped an assist, you were very likely to kill one or two characters in the same combo. Next up, we're going to look at chicken blocking. So chicken blocking is blocking by holding up back instead of back or down back. So it's like you're trying to jump and block at the same time. And this can be used to kind of get out of the opponent's mix-ups uh, because you don't have to worry about blocking high or low if you're in the air. But do note that in Dragon Ball Fighters, it is very easy to get your feet clipped if you're trying to chicken block during someone's block strings. Uh, so this first mostly became a thing in the Versus series of fighting games, Marvel vs. Capcom and X-Men vs. Street Fighter and stuff like that, especially against characters like Magneto and Storm who have really, really crazy high-low mix-ups. Uh, chicken blocking can help you out a lot, again, as long as you don't get your feet clipped by the opponent pressuring you with lows. Next up at number five, we're talking about Oki. So Oki is a word, it's short for the Japanese word Okizeme, which basically means uh, applying mix-ups to your opponent while they're waking up. So uh, Oki is really, really powerful if you land a knockdown and then you go into a mix-up. And an important concept to think about is not ending your combo with a super because supers tend to not give you good Oki, at least level 1 supers in Dragon Ball Fighters. If you end your combo with a super, the opponent gets to recover and it's a lot harder to pressure them. Uh, so people tend to end their combos early with a sliding knockdown or something like that and then they go for Oki. It tends to be a lot stronger. Or, uh, like I mentioned earlier, if you land a level 3, the opponent can't recover off the ground, so that tends to be the best time to get Oki. So characters like Bardock, 
really good. Or uh, with Vegeta, if you land Vegeta's level 3, you kind of get guaranteed Oki by just holding up forward. It kind of times it out perfectly so that if you hold up forward after his level 3, uh, you'll hit the opponent with a jumping heavy right as they get up. Uh, and then they're forced to take the mix up. So you can even do something like an empty jump low or something like that. These are all examples of really strong Oki after a level 3 knockdown. Next up, we're talking about footsies, which is one of kind of the f core fundamental concepts of fighting games. So this word came about because a lot of times when people are playing the ground game in games like Street Fighter, uh, it looks like they're just kind of sticking their feet out, trying to poke each other with their feet like they're playing footsies. Uh, but it's kind of like a catch-all term for any sort of neutral ground game where both players are jockeying for position, trying to poke and counter poke, uh, that kind of thing. It's really, really important in 2D fighting games, especially ones without stuff like air dashing and super jumps, uh, where ground game is going to be kind of the core of neutral play. But that's not to say that games like Dragon Ball Fighters don't have footsies, because they totally do. Despite having crazy beams and super jumps and air dashes and all that stuff, footsies can still be important. Uh, one example would be like if the opponent likes to do dash up auto combo, which is pretty common. It's a way people like to start block strings. Uh, you can back dash to force a whiff and then punish them with like a down medium or something like that. Uh, so that's one common example of footsies that you'll see in the game. Or you can do something like intentionally stand out of range of the opponent's down medium, wait for them to whiff it, and then punish it with your own down medium. That's a great example of footsies. So next up we're talking about DHC. DHC stands for Delayed Hyper Combo. And in the Versus series, that's what it's called when you do one character's super or hyper as they're called in Marvel vs. Capcom. And then you change into the next character on your team doing their hyper combo. So it's kind of like a, an outdated term calling it a DHC, but it's been around for like 20 years, so that's still what people tend to call it. So in a game like Dragon Ball Fighters, I believe the accurate term is called Z-Change. Uh, it refers to when you bring in your next character to do their super after your first character's super. So you can Z-Change from a level 1 into a level 1, or you can go from a level 1 into a level 3. Uh, but people just will kind of shorthand call it a DHC or DHCing into your level 3, something like that. Next up at number 8, we're going to talk about Rekka. So Rekka comes from one of Fei Long's special moves called the Rekka Ken, or just called Rekka for short. And it's kind of a three-part move where you can input just one, just two, or all three parts of the special move. So you can use this for combos, or you can use it to kind of bait the opponent, mix them up, because they don't know how many hits of the attack you're going to end up doing. In Dragon Ball Fighters, uh, something like Yamcha's Wolf Fang Fist would be considered a Rekka, because it's a special move with three parts where you can choose how many parts you're going to do. You can do one, you can do two, or you can do all three. So shorthand, people would kind of call this Yamcha's Rekka. Next up at number 9, this is a big one, DP. DP stands for Dragon Punch. So everyone probably remembers back in Street Fighter 2, the Shoryuken, aka the Dragon Punch, was one of Ryu and Ken's best attacks. And characters like Sagat have kind of DP-like attacks with Tiger Uppercut. Uh, in Dragon Ball Fighters, there are a few examples of DPs uh, like Vegeta. Uh, Adult Gohan and Teen Gohan, people will generally just use DP to mean any fully invincible attack that has kind of an uppercut looking motion or attacks that are done with the DP input of forward, down, down, forward. Alright, last on the list we're looking at installs or install supers. So this refers to any super where instead of doing an attack, it powers up your character. And this comes from the dragon install from Guilty Gear, which is probably the most well-known example of this. Marvel vs. Capcom 3 has a ton of install supers, like Ryu has one that changes the properties of his super moves and some of his specials and stuff like that. Uh, also, Dante and Virgil both have one, it's called the Devil Trigger. Gives them flight mode and some new moves and stuff like that, at least for Dante. Uh, and then Wolverine even has an install super. It's his Berserker Charge, it makes him much faster and enables some new combo options and stuff like that. So these are called install supers. Right now there's only one of them in Dragon Ball Fighters. it's Frieza's level 3, the Golden Frieza. I wouldn't be surprised if they add more install supers, because uh, I think they're kind of fun. They're an interesting way to use meter that isn't just like ending a combo with the super or something like that. It actually changes your character's properties, and I think they're really fun to do. So I'm hoping that some of the future DLC characters might have an install super or two to uh, make things a little more interesting.
All right, that's going to be it for the list, guys. I hope you enjoyed it and found it informative. Are there any terms that I forgot that you think belong on the list? Be sure to let me know down in the comments. And also, I have a pretty fun announcement. I'm even going to show my face for this one. I know this is pretty rare. So, guys, I have stickers. Look at the beautiful logo stickers. Don't they look just like me? Do you see the resemblance? So these are all going out to my patrons on patreon.com slash jmcrofts. Even if you only support for $1, you will get a sticker as well as a little handwritten thank you note from me. So, you know, you can stick them on your notebooks. You can stick them on your binders. You can even stick them on, like, your laptops and your tablets. Guys, these are really high quality, and I have a limited number of them. I have, I have this many, about 100, and once they're all gone, they're gone. So... Please check out my Patreon so you can help support the channel and get access to cool perks like Patreon exclusive lobbies that I play in w along with all of the patrons uh, and stuff like uh, insider access to everything that's going on on the channel, the opportunity to suggest topics for future videos, that kind of thing. So I'll end the plug there. Guys, thank you so much for watching. There's links here. <laughs> to uh, some other videos you might enjoy. Links here to my Patreon and the subscribe button. So that's it, guys. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.